to the Dow Horsemanship. This is Everything Horses and More YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about equine ulcers explained. How they get them, how to treat them, and most of all, how to prevent them. I'm going to talk especially about preventing, I'm going to talk about how we can prevent them holistically as well as what types of medications I've used in the past that have helped. But most importantly, we want to talk about the causes of ulcers. And a lot of this is going to blow your minds because I know that it has blown my mind over the years um, learning more and more about how easily horses get ulcers and how sensitive they are. I think that's the key word here, is horses are so super sensitive. And I don't just mean sensory, their sensory awareness and sensory processing is heightened and um, extraordinary. And that makes up for a lot of their sensitivity. I'm talking about their emotions and their intelligence, but specifically their emotions how sensitive horses are to everything around them, everything. And because of that level of sensitivity, it affects them. Everything affects them. I think one of the things that blew my mind years ago when I read the statistics that I'm gonna share with you is, and I do believe this, because it, it, reading the statistics about ulcers and how easy it is for horses to acquire them gave me a deeper perspective and understanding in a way that made me look at the horses that I was interacting with differently. It, on a deeper level, I was like more prone to watching every little thing and how the horse responded to every little thing I was doing. And I mean it, you guys from tacking up and grooming, to bathing, to touching, to riding, everything. I was more tuned in. It was a good thing. I became a lot more tuned in to how everything affects your horse. I would agree with this, especially based upon my, my experience with thousands of horses, is I definitely agree with the stats that 90% of our horses have ulcers, 90% of them. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? 90%. And while the stats are, or at least the research about ulcers is that they're not healing, they never really go away. They can get inflamed, they can reoccur, they can have their flare-ups, so to speak. And all of this is focused and centered around the horses level of stress. They also, the stats, talk about foals and weanlings, 60 to 90 percent of them having ulcers as well. And that's really sad when you think about our baby horses. And in my experience, both physically working with so many young horses as well as, again, research, when we take our young horses away from their mothers at the early ages of five months or even eight months, we are totally stressing them out. Are they stalled most of the time when they're turned out? Are they turned out with other horses that they actually like and get along with? Or are they turned out in small little paddocks for two to three hours a day and then they're shoved back in a stall? And what does the barn look like? Is the barn dark and damp and cold? Is there a, you know, a, a wall between the stalls where they can't see each other? It's, it's really frightening um, when you think about the depth of a horse's sensitivity and their level of emotional connection to their own species and what we provide them or we don't provide them and how all of this contributes to so much of the stress. And so our young horses are being taken away from their mothers prematurely. In the wild, they stay with their moms up until the age of two, if not the, the females, the fillies, for life. Some of the stats are also reporting that 60 to 90% of our performance horses have ulcers, um, especially our race horses. 
And so we're going to talk a little bit more about our performance horses. And in every discipline, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do, we have to connect the dots and understand how every time you are increasing your horse's stress through adrenaline, um, through speed or through pressure in training, you are producing cortisol. And cortisol is, goes hand in hand with adrenaline. According to Dr. Michael Murray in the Equine Vet Journal, about 60% of foals and 60% of performance horses have ulcers. Other equine vets believe the number of foals and performance horses is as high as 90%. And so it's hard when we're out there reading all this research because you're like, well, who do I believe? And in my experience, it's, I look at it like this. You have, basically, you have a vet, but it comes down to what your vet specializes in. So they are never around um, a lot of births or a lot of foals. They're not going to have a lot of experience with the research that says, well, in our experience and in our research, 90% of the foals have ulcers. So there's four key causes of horse ulcers. We have stress, high carbohydrate diets, being fed only twice a day, and physical activity. So we're gonna talk a little bit about each. So here's stress. Since horses evolved with a nervous system that is highly responsive to stress, they are exceptionally sensitive to the stress hormone cortisol. And keep in mind is the horse has a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is the horse's survival modes and instincts, fight, flight, or freeze. So this is where they're stressed. They will live in their sympathetic nervous system, which constantly produces their instincts, the stress hormones, adrenaline, or cortisol. So we're talking about stress and ulcers, and this is keeping the, the ulcers are constantly keeping the horse stressed, which is affecting their digestion. So just keep that in mind as we're talking, as I'm talking and discussing ulcers throughout this video. Um, you know, keep it in mind where you are with your horse. What are your daily interactions? What's their environment like? What is their training like? Um, if you're performing with your horse, it, this stuff just gets really deep, you guys. It's really tough on them. So, the second uh, big stressor is high carbohydrates. And I definitely agree with this. Our horses no longer get grain um, and or sugar. They are on a totally organic, natural feed program here. And it has changed so many things. So think about your grains. I mean, it's all bad, you guys. It's no different than the food we eat and all the byproducts that are put into our food. It's so different when you go, when you travel, if you're an American, to other countries. And I've been to Europe many times, and they don't, especially in Europe, especially in Italy, you don't have the byproducts in the food like we do, in the flour, in your rice. I mean, we put so much crap, especially sugar, and carbohydrates, which gets broken down into sugar. We put so much of that in our own human consumption here in the, in the US, and think about what we do to our horses. They shouldn't have any of it. The third would be the fact that we are only feeding our horses two or even three times a day. They're natural grazers. They're supposed to be grazing constantly. This is what helps to keep their gut and their digestive system functioning properly and happy and healthy. So if your horse is being boarded and they get fed AM and PM and no lunch, I, I can't tell you how many students I've heard throughout the years where the horses are not fed lunch. That is insane. So horses fed twice a day rather than allowed to graze on pasture are prone to ulcers. This is because grazing 8 to 16 hours a day stimulates constant saliva flow. Saliva has a basic pH and is the opposite of the stomach acid pH. So a constant flow of saliva neutralizes stomach acid. Um, horses evolved to eating almost continuously, so they evolved to release acid steadily during the day. When horses are fed only twice a day, gastric acids are produced continuously. 
but there is insufficient saliva to buffer. It's like the mucus to buffer the stomach contents and help the lining of the stomach um, remain ulcer free. The fourth would be physical activity. So horses undergoing physical activity such as racing or any kind of um, endurance or high pressure training. So that includes all your disciplines, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, may develop ulcers because exercise causes abdominal muscles to contract. And so how would you know if your horse is, you know, not predisposed, but has an ulcer during training? It's going to be really hard for them. There's many, many um, behaviors. One would be, let's just start out with grooming. Anytime you're touching your horse around the stomach or towards um, the intestine or the, the flank area, they could be really sore or ouchy. They can pin their ears, try to cow kick you, or even bite you. We're looking for consistencies. We're not looking for a one day that your horse might be off. Um, pay attention to patterns. Pay attention to, well, this is the third day, second day, third day, fourth day, something's wrong. A dull hair coat, how about that? dull hair or even the inability to shed out well in the spring that has a lot to do with nutrition as well as ulcers reluctance to train doesn't want to come to you anymore from the field or want to come to you in the stall or is irritable in cross ties how about tooth grinding bruxism mm. frequent colic weight or muscle loss anemia diarrhea, lack of energy and lethargy, blood in the stool, loss of appetite or anorexia, cribbing or weaving. So prevention. How about this? And this is my list, you guys. This is more of a holistic prevention. Then we'll get into the medicated preventions. Keep, how about keeping your baby horses with their mothers until the age of two, especially since now we've heard that 90% of our young horses contract ulcers. Um, give them space to roam and socialize at least 18 hours a day. Give them a routine, absolutely a routine. Horses love routine just like we do. They do love schedules. It doesn't mean that you can't teach them to be flexible. You can do both. Train them slowly and gently. This is huge. Train them slowly and gently. So this means when you have a young horse, you can begin their training immediately, but it's all about what type of training you're doing. They're gonna, they're gonna stress very easily until you can develop a, a really well-rounded, um, healthy horse mentally and emotionally. And then they'll be able to self-regulate. And they'll be connected to you in relationship, so there'll be tremendous trust and confidence. So GastroGuard RX um, is one of the or the only FDA approved ulcer treatment out there, GastroGuard. And so um, there's also UlcerGuard. GastroGuard again is the only FDA approved. It is number one and it's given once a day for 28 days. And then we have the next um, recommended ulcer treatment, which is Ulcer Guard. And this is a little, it's less expensive. So those are the top three. You can be more preventative with Smart Packs um, preventions like UGuard that I use. You can use Ulcer Guard um, and then Gastric. Uh, GastroGuard. So those are the medications, the top medications for ulcers. Um, I think, again, the biggest takeaway from this video is being really aware of your horse's sensitivity level and how easy it is for them to get stressed out. And during that stress, what kind of behaviors do they have? that they usually don't have. And I think it's just mind-blowing when we think that 90 to 99% of our horses have ulcers all the time, or they come and go all the time. 
depending on the situation or the circumstances. And we need to pay attention to that. So is it is your horse, is it hard for your horse to, to maintain weight, um, muscle? Uh, does your horse have any, um, you know, is your horse a cribber? Do they grind their teeth? Do they act irritated um, when you touch them, especially around the, the belly, the intestines, the flanks, when you saddle them? Um, and how are they during training? Do they seem more tense while you're, you're schooling them or training them? You know, we're always looking for relaxation. I think that's like number one in your mind. What does it look like in everything we do with our horse? Where is the relaxation with our horses? It should always be there. It should always be in everything you do with your horse. And if it isn't there, what can you do to create it? Because if your horse gets stressed, if you're aware of it, you can immediately stop and redirect that and make it a less stressful situation and change, change the um, potential of your horse getting an ulcer. So you can stop this, you can prevent this, but you've got to be really aware and tuned in to all of these things. And obviously, the biggest takeaway again is how sensitive our horses are. And we need to pay more attention to them, listen to them, watch them, observe them, go slower so that we pay more attention and we can catch when they are getting stressed and bring them back to relaxation. So thank you. Um, again, this is a snippet of the full length video, so you can get, get the full length video in our Everything Horses and More video library. And if you'd like to learn how to develop your horses or restart your horse, retrain your horse, um, check out my Spirituality of Horsemanship course or my Mastery Membership Riding Foundation program, which includes the Spirituality course. They will totally change everything. It's a total game changer, you guys. Thanks again, and may you always be one with your horse.